for his mercy over you, for provision, for protection, for providence, for allowing you to see the light of the day. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and worship him. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. We adore you. We glorify you. We honor you for your praise, for your glory, for providing for our needs according to your riches and glory. Let's start to round off. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, with our hearts full of praises and joy this morning, we thank you because you are God. We thank you because you are not man. We thank you because when you say, you will do. We thank you for bringing us to the light of today. We thank you because this morning we lift our hands, we can lift them. We lift our legs, we can lift them. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we can speak and voice comes out of our mouth. And we can also hear others speaking. May your holy name be exalted in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, beyond human comprehension, speak to us this morning. Speak to us in the living echo of your word. And let your word, O Lord, Heavenly Father, be an our encourager. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Please have your seat is well with you in Jesus' name. I'm smiling this morning because I'm seeing good people of God sitting, ready to listen to what God has to say. I am seeing the faces of overcomers, the faces of successful people, the faces of high flyers. Overcomer, are you there? Overcomer, are you there? Successful people, are you there? Victorious people, are you there? Lifted, I am lifted. I am lifted by the Lord. Above sins and sorrows, into the presence of the Lord. Are you lifted? I am lifted. I am lifted by the Lord. Above sins and sorrows, into the presence of the Lord. I am happy this morning because I'm seeing the faces of those who have been lifted above sorrow, who have been lifted above the calamities of life. And in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not take yourself away from there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Today our theme is trusting God in all situations. Trusting God in all situations. And as I was meditating on this sermon, one of the things I've discovered is this. And that God told me, people will surely try to bring you down. That is their work. Hello? But God will lift you up. God will lift you up. People will want to give you cancers that will discourage you, but God will encourage you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our theme is trusting God in all situations. Trusting God in all situations. Daniel chapter 3 verse 17. Daniel 3 17, the three Hebrews, they say, if that is the case, O king, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Praise the Lord. They made a statement of faith. And the next verse they say, King, even if God decides not to deliver us, let it be known unto you that we will not bow down to your idol. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Trusting God in all situations. Let me ask you again. Is our God bigger than our problems? No, no, wait. Let me be personal. Is your God the one you are serving? Let's, let's share this corporate faith. Because without individual faith, there can be no corporate faith. Hello? Is your God, the God who we are serving, is he bigger than your problem? Is your God bigger than your challenges? Is your God able to deliver you from problems of life? Is your God able to make you successful? Is your God able to lift you up? Is he able to make you go forward? Then what are we talking about? If I know, I know my God, the one I'm serving, is able to move me forward. The one who I'm serving will not abandon me. Human beings may reject me. God will not reject me. Hello? When a man criticizes you, God is justifying you. If you are walking on his path, I know who I'm believed. And I know that he's able to keep to the end what I've committed to his hands. This is my own persuasion. You see, Christianity is not by force. It's by persuasion. It's by persuasion. When you look at what is happening in the country and around the world, they'll be thinking that, why can't we Christians also start to carry guns, start to carry cutlass, start to... No! It is by persuasion, not by force. That you know, that you know, that you know that God is able to keep what you have committed to his hands. Praise the Lord. Let me show you something about my own God. And I'm sure that one or two people in the church is also your God. I'm talking of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. My God is my light and my salvation. According to Psalm 27, verses 1 and I mean 1 to 3, say, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It now went further. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Who made them to fall? Is it you? No. The issue is not whether you are praying, my enemy fall and die, or you are not praying. The issue is that when you are on the right side of God, whoever makes himself your enemy has turned himself to be an enemy of God. That's the kind of God we serve. The God who can wipe off a whole nation because of one singular person. That's the God we are serving. The God who said in Romans 9, 15 that I will have mercy on who I will have mercy on and I will have compassion on who I will have compassion on. Let's pray for illumination to know this God. To know we are serving. Amen. Get of stewards, please. You will allow me to sing before you open the door, please. If somebody comes late to a service, he doesn't have the right to disturb others. That's the truth. We are serving God. We don't know how mighty this God is. Amen. Is my present help in trouble? Eh? I will make sure I will put him in trouble. Try it. You meet God. That's my God. Is he your God also? You have overcome. In the name of Jesus. That is the God I'm serving. Psalm 46 verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a present help in trouble. A present help, that is the help that is readily available. 
The one that you don't do ablution before you meet him. The one that you don't need to pay any money for him to answer you. The one who is able to save to the uttermost. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. That is the God we are serving. Is that your God also? Is that your God also? Ah, if it's your God, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid of what man will do to you? This is the God that will not allow me to be put to shame. He will never allow me to be put to shame. First Peter 2.6 1 Peter 2, he said, Therefore it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I laid in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means put to shame. You believe in him, you will not be put to shame. And I'm praying for someone here today. That cloud of shame that is hovering over your head will wipe away. That day of shame that they have marked for you, that day will never come. Whether they have told you the date or they have not told you, that day will never come. Because we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. If someone this morning is not just to shout and is to make you know we are serving a mighty God. Let me give you a testimony. You know, I like giving testimonies. This particular passage, this particular passage, I went to pray for one man one day. He owned bank, six million naira, and they wanted to sell his house, which was 36 million naira. Bank people, God will forgive you. And they wanted to sell this house in Ikeja, GRA. And the man has said, okay, let's, let's try and do something. They now, they are looking for this money. He now said, okay, we can rent the house. Don't that mean to you human beings, that is not a good thing, the house they want to sell. But you are looking for a way of escape. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, I think so. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he said he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. He said with the temptation, he will make a way of escape. I pray for someone listening to me today. In every trouble you have, God will make a way of escape. God will make a way of escape. God will make a way of escape. In the mighty name of Jesus, it doesn't matter who put you in that trouble because you are serving a living God. God will bring you out of that trouble in the mighty name of Jesus. So they say, okay, we want to rent the house in order to escape the bank selling the house to look for money. And when they are, we now pray over the house and this scripture came to my mind. I said, do you believe? I asked the wife, do you believe in God? He said, yes. I said, he said those who believe in him will never be put to shame. Because this is a man who was a commissioner before in Lagos State, and now to hear that they sold his house because of debt. Ah. I pray for someone here today. Every calculated attempt of the enemy to bring you to shame will never come to pass. Yeah. We now pray. To cut the long story short, we now pray and about six days or so after our prayer, I always like to give time because there are some people, unbelieving believers in the church, unbelieving believers. When God acts, they will say it's coincidental. They don't believe. They come to church. If we are saying we are the believers, they will raise up their hands, but in actual fact, they don't believe. 
Since they to cut the long story short, how they did uh, my will be and so on and so far, I won't be able to say that this morning. Six days after our prayer, when they have tried for more than six months trying to get somebody, and I think it was about three days before the final day that bank gave. And this man came in with an agent looking for a house to live. This is a man that was living in America. He said, anytime he comes home, so he's, I think he's a family people, somebody who, who gather people around him. He used to stay in the airport hotel in Ikeja. He now said he's spending too much on the, in the hotel, and the hotel is also exposing him too much. He now said he's looking for a house to rent, so anytime he comes back, he can stay there. Hello? And he decided to rent that house. Are you listening to me? Normally in Lagos, the, the landlord will say, I want, three, I want to take three years rent, Abby. If you negotiate, they will say two. If you are really persuasive, they will say one and a half years. And this man decided to rent the house for six years. Six years. See, for the next six years, I don't want to worry myself. I want to rent it for six years. And they now calculated it. And the man, this landlord, was able to get that six million and even more. And went to the bank. That time there was no internet banking, there was no bank transfer, and so on and so forth. And took the check and went to the bank. About three or four or two days before the time, he came, he wanted to see the manager. The manager said no. The manager thought he has come to beg. I told him, tell the manager I want to see him. When he, when he raised his voice, they asked him to come in. Because they thought he has come to beg. He just presented the check. That is your money. The manager opened his mouth wide and cannot close it. All those who are waiting for the day of your shame, they will open their mouth wide. They will not be able to close it. That's the God we are serving. Let's, fall, let's, let's put off the, all these politics in the church. God has not called us to be playing politics in the church. He has called us to believe in him. Jesus has called us to follow him. Thank you, Jesus. You are here today. Your son is about to wear. You say, no, allow the, allow the bride to be conceived. For so we know that she will not be burning when he gets her. Are you God? You better stop it. You are not God. Amen. Whoever trusts in him will not be put to shame. This is God that will not allow someone to be put to shame. If you trust in him, you will never be put to shame. Yeah. Number four, I know about this God that I'm serving is that it's my great provider. It's what? I have a lot of testimonies on that. It's my great provider. It's a great provider. It's a great provider. Jesus is a great provider. He's a great provider. He will surely provide for you and provide for me. He's a great provider. He's a great provider. He's a great provider. Oh, yes. He He's a great provider. Jesus is a great provider. Oh, yes, he will surely provide for me and provide for you. Praise the Lord. That's one of the choruses we used to sing in those days when we, we were magnifying God appreciating. But today, now, in most cases, it's give me, give me, give me. We don't even remember to thank him for what he has done. And immediately we sing songs like this, they think, okay, it's time for offering. It's appropriate when we are sing, when we are taking offering to sing such songs. Because what we are offering to God, Abinisho is the one that gave it to us. True of us. 
He's the one that gave it to us. He's a great provider. This God I'm serving. I have a lot of testimonies concerning that. A lot of testimonies. When I was to marry this girl, when I was to marry this girl, I knew then I'm the one that will carry my load of the wedding. I had, was it 20,000 naira? Everything I had in the bank, 20,000 naira. And I wanted to marry. We started planning. Amen? We started planning marriage. 20,000 naira. We start from an invitation card. When I told people we are going to get married, One of the printers that was doing for us in the Directorate of Evangelism said, don't worry, I will print the invitation card to you free of charge. No WhatsApp message then. That's where we started. We got to the PCC, my Oga. We said, okay. Last year, somebody got married in that church. A curate got married in that church. And they gave him 40000 I was expecting 40000 also. And we got to the PCC. They raise it. You say, yes, there is precedence that because of inflation, let's give me 50,000. Are you listening to me? My God said, no, 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 you can't do that. We will give him 15,000. And nobody there queried him. I felt so bad. I said, well, what can I do? Accuracy is to be seen and not to be heard. That was the principle there. And I got to the Directorate of Evangelism Office and the uh, Venerable Oshewa of Blessed Memory came to the office. <laughs> if you know him, he was a manager in Chevron and a priest. He just came to the office, brag, 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 the way he always says, <laughs> you say you want to get married. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you want to get? What, how much is your, the, the clothes you will wear for what they call this? Engagement. And I put there, I say 10,000. Okay. He brought his check out. He was writing 10,000 naira. And uh, Mrs. Familoni was the director of evangelism. He came, he said, No, how much are you writing for him? He said, 10,000. He said, No, 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 you can't give him 10,000. Give him 20,000. And he wrote 20,000. To cut the long story short, do you know that doing the wedding, paying for everything, the 20,000 naira I have in the bank, I did not touch it. I did not touch it. And you may say it's because you are a priest. So many priests will do wedding and they go into debt. I am telling you. Church members, uh, may God have mercy on us. May God have mercy on us. But when you are serving this God, the great provider... People will even be jealous of you, like Isaac. He's a great provider. He fed 5,000 in the wilderness. So, when we are talking of provision of God, it is not how much you have in the bank that determines how God is going to bless you. And he can use anybody to bless you. Where you are expecting the help to come from, it may not come from there. But God knows what he's going to do. This is the God we are serving. He's a great provider. If only we will put our trust in him. Amen? If only we put our trust in him. God knows what he's going to do. I was giving that testimony somewhere. And somebody, a woman, they say, yes, I, I agree with you. Reverend, that our God is a great provider. You know, it depends on your own size. Are you following me now? She now told me the story of her own, that her own, her father died. And then uh, she needed to bury her father. And she was like the breadwinner of the house, but no money. And when they now calculated how much she's going to spend, it was five million naira. How much? Before you say ha, it depends on the level you are in the society. Am I right? 
It depends on your status. Some may do their own with 500 naira. Some may do with 500,000. Some may do the 5 million. It depends on your status in the society. True or false? 5 million. No money. And she prayed to God, well, God, you see, there is no money now. All the work she did, nobody was paying her this and that. And said, somebody just called her an old acquaintance. Say, ah, so, so, ah, your father died. I like you are going to do the burial. I say, yes, okay. I remember when I was doing my own father's burial, you gave me money. So, you know, when you are friend, you can joke, even with serious issues. Abby, say, it is now to repay you. It is now to, to retaliate. Because we used, uh, around that, we used this uh, idea means language. You know idea means, did you watch that film? He said, we have come here, you fed us, and we are fed up. When you come to our place, we shall retaliate. What he's saying is that we are satisfied. When you come, we will now repay you. Say, we shall retaliate. Say, yeah, it's time for me to retaliate. Are you following me now? Say, send me your bank account. Your bank details, and he sent it. She sent it, and this friend of this woman put exactly five million naira into that account. And it was, she was not telling me that, do you know what I did during our whole time? Many, many years ago, I only gave her 500,000 naira. And she's now repaying with 5 million. You see, whatever you sow, you will reap in multiple. But it may be a long time before you reap it. You will surely reap it, whether good or bad. Whether good or bad. Our God, the God I'm serving, oh, the one I'm serving, I don't know the one you are serving. Is it the same? You are an overcomer. Clap for yourself. That's the God we are serving. So when we are talking of Christianity, it's not a cunningly conceived idea. It's a reality. It's a reality. That's how God provided for her. God will provide for you. So don't worry if you are facing a financial obligation at night. It seems there is no help. Help is coming. I say help is coming. I say help is coming. In the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know if you are excited like me this morning about this God. The almighty God. The almighty. One of the reasons why we don't experience his mightiness, like I always say, is that in most cases we focus on ourselves and not on him. We focus on ourselves and not on him. And in most cases, when we focus on ourselves, we focus on ourselves in pride or with pride. Please, let's focus on God. He fed the 5,000 in the wilderness. He turned the fish mouth, the mouth of a fish, he turned it to a bank. Do you remember? When they were to pay, what was it, tax? And there was no money. Because Jesus was not doing any secular job. When Jesus was going himself and his disciples, <coughs> excuse me, he was going himself and his disciples, they depend on what people give them, what you can call the goodwill. Somebody posted on their Facebook recently, he said Peter was a tent maker, uh, Luke was a what? Luke was a physician, uh, John was a fisherman. Ask your pastor, what is his profession? I said, that person is foolish because they have started to criticize again. Peter was a fisherman. Did he continue to fish? Luke was a physician, doctor. Did he continue to practice it? Apostle Paul that is referring to as a tent maker, Apostle Paul only make tents to gain entrance for open door for the gospel. If you are a farmer, I'm a farmer. We all go to the farm in the morning. In the evening, you now want me to pray for you. Where will I get the energy? I'm standing before you now preaching. If I'm a businessman, you are a businessman. We are all struggling for contract. When will I have time to study the Bible and to be ditching it out verse by verse to you without making mistakes? 
When you are sleeping at night, if we have struggled together in the afternoon, I didn't sleep for more than two hours throughout the night. If I struggle in the afternoon and in the night I did not sleep, what am I writing letter to? It is your job as a church member to take care of your pastor. I am not begging, but I am saying what the Bible says. And if you have done it, there is nothing to be proud about. I'm not saying I don't appreciate it. But that is it. Christianity is not by force. It's by persuasion. Praise the Lord. Somebody in this congregation, when we were to do the education of the, what was it? Um, sectariat. He offered the house, hosted three bishops. Three bishops. Three wise men. And they have dropped gift, spiritual gift for him. You know one of the bish one, what one of the bishops said? I'm sorry to say it. He said, ah, I never knew I can enjoy something like this before my retirement. I felt like crying. I felt like crying. God provides. He has ways of providing for people. He will provide your own for you. Out of the good things you have done in the past, you have forgotten. God will now remember it. And I'm praying for someone listening to me this morning. This is your season of remembrance. This is your season of remembrance. The Lord will remember you for good. In the mighty name of Jesus. We must know the God we are serving. He will never abandon us. I'm looking at time now. In actual fact, let me say, there is nothing that God cannot do. What do I say? There's not my God. Jeremiah 32, 17. He said, Our Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. Jeremiah 32, 17. Our Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and now stretch them. There is nothing too hard for you. That is Jeremiah saying that. May you have divine encounter. If you have divine encounter, you will know this God we are serving. He can bring something out of nothing. He can bring abundance out of nothing. Verse 27 of that same Jeremiah 32. He now said, Behold, God is now replying. Jeremiah said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And I'm asking you this morning, is there anything too hard for your God? Then why don't we have faith in him? Whatever happens, trusting in God, in whatever situation we find ourselves, he's able to deliver us. He's able, abundantly able, to deliver and to save my God is able abundantly able to deliver those who trust in him Amen how do we tap this ability of God? That brings us back again to the theme of our meditation this morning. Trusting God in all situations. How do we tap this ability? By trusting in him. Those who trust in the law are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved but stands forever. Trusting in him. Having faith in him. Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's all. Having faith in him. All we are doing in the church, the sermons, the hymns, the prayers, this and that, is to increase your faith in God. Because you cannot receive blessings from God beyond the level of your faith. Those who trust in him, they are like Mount Zion. 
that cannot be moved but stand forever. I say, as mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround his people, even from now and henceforth. He said, for the scepter of wickedness shall not rest upon the portion of the righteous, that the righteous may not put forth their hands to iniquity. Trust. All you need to do is to trust him. Believe in him. Trust in him. And that is why what the devil wants to do in our lives is to hinder our faith in God. To distract us. To discourage us. To make us become disgruntled and disenchanted. But our God, my God, I'm trying to be personal, though I'm a pastor, but I know that one or two people in the church today, my God is also your God. Is he your God? Is the maker of heaven and earth your God? Is the provider in the wilderness your God? Is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ your God? If it's your God, then let's rise up and sing. He is able, abundantly able to deliver and to save. My God is able. Oh yes, to deliver to so trust in him. If you truly trust in him, go ahead and talk to him. Go ahead and talk to me, dear Sonny. Father, I believe in you. You are able. You are able. Abundantly able. Go ahead. Abundantly able. I trust in you, Lord. I know you are able to deliver me. I know you are able to heal me. I know you are able to provide for me. I know you are able to remove this shame from me. Focus on him and not on yourself. And the gospel read... Martha told Jesus, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But Jesus said that even your brother died, though, he's going to live again. And Lazarus lived again. That's the God we are serving. He can raise the dead. Have that trust in him. He will not allow you to be put to shame. I was telling you about a man that their bank is ready to sell his house. And God delivered him. The same God is here today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me say this to assist our prayers. Pray from a position of victory. Hello? What did I say? What is a position of victory? A position of victory is like you have a check. Your name is there. It is properly signed. You go to the bank with confidence, Abby, to withdraw it. You don't go to the bank with maybe, maybe not. Do you get it now? So I want you to pray this morning with the mind that God is going to answer you. That this God is powerful enough to handle your case. In Matthew chapter 8, that leprous man came to him and said, Jesus, if you are willing, you are able. If you are willing... And Jesus said, what are you talking about? I am willing to be cleansed. Did you get it? Our God is able and willing. Effective demand. In those days when they were teaching us economics, effective demand is that that person is willing 
and is also able. God is willing. God is able. So pray for that position of victory. Like Bartimaeus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So pray. Because when you are going to the bank with that check, you are not saying, maybe, maybe not. If they say they are not, are you still here? Don't pray yet. Are you still listening to me? When you are taking that check to the bank, if they say they are not paying you, what will you do? What is the first thing you will do? You will ask questions, why not? Abi? Because you have confidence. I always tell people when you are praying, whether God will answer or will not answer. If God does not answer, he will tell you why he's not answering. So pray from position of victory to this morning. As you take that case to God, believe that God is going to do it. You want your daughter to get married this year? Tell God. You are not commanding God. You are only asking for him to do what he has promised to do. Praise the Lord. If I am sick and I'm praying, though if I'm sick, I won't lie you and say, say I'm not sick. Mm -mm. I'm sick, but I know that God will heal me. That's the position. So when I'm praying for healing, I believe that God is going to do it. Not that he may do it. So pray for that from that position of victory. Can we go ahead and pray? Go ahead and pray. What is that situation in your life? God is able. He's able. He's able. Trust him. Have faith in him. That's the God we serve. He's a loving God, a loving father. He's bigger than our problems. Stronger than the strongest. Higher than the highest. Able to save. Able to deliver that boy that is giving you trouble. Able to deliver that girl that is giving you sorrow. And I'm praying for all the parents in the house today. You will not sorrow over any of your children. Let's bring our prayer to a close. Let's bring up. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you because you are able more than able. We know that you have answered the prayers we offer this morning. All we are asking for, Lord, let there be manifestation of the answers. In the mighty name of Jesus. And any way the devil may want to hinder the answer. We pray you will rebuke the devil on our behalf in the name of Jesus. If there is any evil power holding our blessings in captive, deal with that evil power this morning and release our blessings to us in the name of Jesus. If there is any satanic prison that is holding our blessings, let there be a shaking. Let there be an earthquake. Shake the prison, Lord. Open the door, Lord, and release our blessings to us. I know that someone is here this morning. By next Sunday, you will have a big testimony to give. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He is able, abundantly able, to deliver.